wall off the table in upcoming DACA negotiations. Schumer said he had offered to give Trump $25 billion for the wall and border security in exchange for a deal on DACA. But Deputy White House Press Secretary Hogan Gidley said that offer, quote, never existed. President Trump hit back at Schumer in a tweet last night, saying, quote, crying Chuck Schumer fully understands, especially after his humiliating defeat, that if there is no wall, there is no DACA. We must have safety and security together with a strong military for our great people. Joining us now, former Treasury official and Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. And Joe, he had a skiing accident. He's, he's on crutches. Oh, no. Yes. Just like oh, our trip horrible. to the ER this weekend, he too was at a mm. ski slope yeah. and then in the ER. But can I just tell you very briefly my funny story? So I get to the bottom of this <coughs> hill with my yeah. bad leg. I end up in this clinic at Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And eventually mm. the doctor comes in. He looks at me and he says, I know you from somewhere. Oh, boy. And I said, no. Was that no, good or bad? You don't know me from anywhere. And he said, good. yeah, I know you from somewhere. And I said, well, only if you watch a lot of cable news. And then he looks and says, you're the chart man. You're the chart oh man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there are chart watchers in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Wow. Thank God. And I'm sure they gave you special care because your charts are amazing. <laughs> also with that us, White funny. House correspondent for PBS NewsHour, Yamish Alcindor, and commentary editor for The Washington Examiner and a visiting fellow at American Enterprise Institute. Tim Carney. Good to have you all on board. Joe, it's one of those mornings yeah. where there's too many dots to connect and it's best we don't. Just put the dots out there. Right. Well, you know, though, this, this is very interesting, though. Uh, Donald Trump tweeted out what he tweeted out yesterday <sighs> that uh, Cry and Chucky knew that he <sighs> lost. Actually, if you look at the NBC News survey, Monkey Poll, uh, while we're looking at Donald Trump's false tweet, 58% of Americans believe that either Donald Trump or the Republican Congress were responsible for the shutdown. 39% uh, believe the Democrats were. Mm -hmm. So you add up congressional Republicans and President Trump. The Republicans on that list uh, far outnumber the Democrats. But, you know, um, I, let, let's go to let's let's go to our ski our our, our, our ski uh, <laughs> uh, expert first, and uh, it just Steve, I'm going to ask you why. Why would Chuck Schumer feel the need to say what he said yesterday? It didn't seem to be especially constructive. I know he was getting pressure from his base, but isn't that the point when they ask you to say, you know what, everything's on the table. We want to move towards a negotiation. Everything's on the table. Instead of, you know, sounding a bit petulant like the president and saying, I'm taking it back. Yeah, look, it was, it, it's an, the Democrats are in a somewhat awkward position. They, they are divided. You've got these 10 red state Democrats who are up for re-election, who are very worried about their future. Uh, and you have a bunch of centrist Democrats who are saying, we don't really think shutdowns are good for the country, good for anybody. And then you have the progressives who want to shut down the government essentially permanently until they get DACA. And so it's really been a tough, it's been a bit of a tough row. And so I think the reason he took that off the table was because essentially now he wants to start the negotiations from, from zero rather than from already having given the wall. And so by bringing this back, he's got something else, another chip to try to play with the president. What I worry about is that if the sentiment in the Democratic caucus against shutdowns persists, that even when you get to February, the next deadline, uh, that the Democrats may not really have the fa firepower to stop the president on some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And, and I, so I think the Democrats are a little bit on their back foot at the moment. And Tim Carney, uh, it's going to be tough enough getting anything through the Senate. Perhaps we hear that maybe, you know, there will be 65, 70 senators voting for a bill. But that means absolutely nothing in the House if you don't have tough border protection, if you don't have what the president wants with the wall. And the only way this thing gets dragged through the House of Representatives and passes would be if Donald Trump pressured him, right? That's right. The wall is everything for Donald Trump. And that's, I think, why Chuck Schumer wanted to take it off the table, because for uh, a huge part of his base, opposing Donald Trump is everything. So if the wall is in there, I have trouble seeing 
House Republic. Now, of course, when I say the wall, that's a, a vague concept, and yeah. we can get into that later. But if right. a satisfactory wall is in there, I have trouble seeing House Republicans bucking Donald Trump's main campaign promise. And there's enough of the sort of lobbyist base in both parties that wants as much relief for illegals, including DACA, as possible. And so I think separating this out and putting a small immigration deal on the table outside of government funding has a real chance of passing and that with Schumer's got it Schumer's in a tough situation where he also wants to pass something that does DACA but he knows that he has a base out there that their number one priorities do not give any wins to Donald Trump right. and a wall would be so that win. So, Tim, you sound a bit more positive than Noah Rothman and other people on the set yesterday in that if there is something that's at least called a wall, that Donald Trump can go back to his base and say, I got that wall I promised you, then you believe, actually like I believe, that Donald Trump will get that passed through the House. Yeah, and I mean, there, there's other, there's tons of immigration provisions that could be put in, but at the Examiner, we've editorialized repeatedly, let's make this a small deal. And this is kind of how the Senate's supposed to work, too, right? Don't have it all be legislated on government shutdown. You want something on immigration. These other guys want something on immigration, rather than it just be a Republican bill with some Democrats or a Democratic bill with some Republicans. Both sides look at it. Maybe these guys don't go along, these guys don't go along, but both people have something to offer. They use that to get it across the finish line rather than using the threat of a government shutdown to get it across the finish line. So, so Yamiche, help me understand this. The entire point for Democrats of inserting immigration into the government shutdown conversation was to get protections for DACA recipients. That didn't happen, but they got a promise from Mitch McConnell that there would be a conversation about that and they could work out some kind of a deal. But we know, and the president has said over and over, and as Tim just said again, the president says, no wall, no deal. There has to be border security if you want me to, to keep DACA recipients in this country. So if you take the wall off the table, Chuck Schumer, where's the deal? Essentially, right now, there is no deal. Yesterday, I talked to White House spokesperson Hogan Gidley, who essentially told me that Schumer's offer to the president was like to, was like Hogan telling me that he was going to give the readers of PBS NewsHour a million dollars. The offer never existed. So he essentially was saying that Schumer never really made an offer, that he was talking about an authorization, but not a real appropriation. And there's this idea that the Democrats essentially were making two solid points when they shut down the government. They said that they were tired of having really short-term spending deals and they were tired and they really wanted the DACA fix to be included in that. They didn't get either one of those things and then they reopened the government. So it leaves the Democrats essentially looking weak, even to their own base. There were so yeah. many emails that went out yesterday from liberal groups that were essentially saying the Democrats took a bad deal. They, they, they opened the government too quickly. Um, and with the White House saying essentially that the president is not going to stop until he gets $33 billion in border security funding, including $18 billion for the wall, I don't know how this is going to continue. Yeah. Hey, Tim, uh, right. in the past five or six days, we've had endless discussions about DACA. We've seen the government shut down. We've seen increased amounts of uh, verbiage from the White House and from the Senate about this issue. And I can't think of a time in the recent past when we've had proof positive that the system has become so dysfunctional, so broken, that you have an issue, DACA, where 90% yeah. of Americans want it done, where most Republicans, sensible Republicans, and there are a lot of them, want it done, where nearly all Democrats want it done, and it might not get done. No, and I, I think uh, it's a very good point, especially because the spending bills, <laughs> there was a supermajority of the Senate that agreed with those uh, every provision in the continuing resolution, including the long-term uh, extension of children's health insurance, uh, federally subsidized children's health insurance. So why wasn't it getting passed? It's because the Senate has gone from being a hundred individuals. They, they thought of themselves as, you know, we're, we're all sort of scholars. This is a Roman Senate, to instead being two individuals. And those two are Chuck Schumer and Mitch McConnell. That the partisanship that has that uh, the the party leaders control the Senate nearly entirely. You throw in the fact that everything gets filibustered. They haven't nuked the filibuster on legislation yet. And so instead of there being a situation where let's have an amendment vote, let's have a debate. No, a debate and an amendment vote. That's the last thing these party leaders want to uh, trot out there on the floor because a tough vote is the last thing one of these vulnerable uh, 2018. 
18 Democrats wants to have to face. So I think it's broken the government. Mostly you can point to the fact that the U.S. Senate is broken. It does not function as the Senate was thought was going to function. Well, Steve let Bradford. me just say a couple things. First of all, uh, Mike, on your on your point about the last time we've had this on guns, we had a 90-10 issue on guns and we couldn't get anything done. So it's very odd to me as well that the elected representatives of the people don't seem to want to do what the people want them to do. Um, <coughs> secondly, on this on this current situation, look, there's a, there's an easy. Uh, there was a trade. I mean, there was a deal, right, between the Democrats and Trump until he reneged on it, which is you do DACA, you get some money for border security, Trump can call it a wall, the Democrats can call it enhanced border security, and life goes on. And, and so I think there is a deal out there, notwithstanding what Chuck said yesterday, which was all part of a negotiation, that isn't that hard to do. I think what we learned the other day, which is troubling to those of us who want to see DACA get done, who have <coughs> concerns about the wall, is that the Senate Democrats... Uh, are not actually completely united. They're not following, completely following Chuck Schumer. They are worried about their own re-election prospects. They're worried about their perception. And so I think the challenge <coughs> for the Democrats is going to be holding together firmly enough to get a, a good deal out of the president. I think that's going to be the give and take, and that's what we should watch for in February. You know, I, I, I agree with Tim, Mika, that there is a deal to be made here, and yeah. it's a pretty easy deal if you can drain the emotion out of it. On one side, you've got DACA. It's a 90-10 issue. And unlike the gun issue, uh, even though we talked about it for months and months and months, mm -hmm. there are just some members in the House and the Senate and the Republican Party <clears throat> that will never, ever negotiate. And there's nothing you can trade right. for that. Here with DACA, you've got a 90-10 issue. And you, you've got, you're going to have for the next two years pictures of, of young, young adults uh, being dragged out by ICE, dragged out of the country. They're going to be these nightmare scenes that are going to completely gut Republican standing in the suburbs, like that shot we saw, I think it was out of Detroit, um, last week of a 39-year-old being ripped away from his family. Uh, those are the side, uh, sort of things that when Ronald Reagan would see them on evening news, uh, it would drive his aides crazy, but he'd say, we have to fix that. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we can't be that party. We can't wear the black hat. That's why Ronald Reagan won 49 states. And that's why I think it makes a lot of sense for Republicans to say, okay, we'll give you DACA. You give our president the wall, whatever that wall may be. It may just be a couple of miles of barbed wire fence and, you know, some 30-weight ball bearings and gauze pad. <laughs> but, but whatever they want to call the wall, they call the wall, everybody wins, and they move forward. This should be easy. And if it's not, I think it's time <laughs> that Republicans address that they have a much bigger problem on their hands with this White House. Tim Carney and Yamish Alcindor, thank you both.